praise God and so we want to just rely on the strength of God because indeed he is our strength you are my strength when I am weak you are the treasure that I seek you are my all Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up, I'll be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. I'll be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. God is good. And all the time, God is good. I just want to apologize to those on Facebook for the audio. We would have now resolved that. And hence, we are still happy that you were able to still.
that part of the praise and worship. Our speaker for this morning is our evangelist here. He is Pastor Rowan Wallace. He's a man who loves to share the word of God. And I know that when he will deliver the word, it is something that the Lord would have laid on his heart. And it's something that will definitely bless you. But before he comes, I'd like to invite the church as we will sing Bless Thy Word. Let us pray. Lord, indeed, glorify your name. You send forth your words, dear God. And Lord, you esteem your words, dear Father. In all that you say, in all that you do, and they come, they should command, dear God, our attention. And so even use them now, dear God, as I proclaim them, dear God. And Lord, I pray your blessing and your direction through Jesus Christ, so Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. It's a good morning to be in the house of the Lord. Eh? It's a good morning to praise his holy name. It's a good morning. And I just want to glorify God at this time that we have, even as we serve him. You know, Jesus, it is said that Jesus is a friend of sinners. And Jesus eat with sinners but Jesus never seek to compromise his stance where sin is concerned. He never seek to rationalize God's will. Our Lord standard of God in order to accommodate people. Jesus did not. And Jesus in declaring his truth. He declares it to you and me so that you and I can understand that he will not change his standard to please you and God will be left out of the picture. He does not. And Jesus Christ, while he was on one of his journeys, the scripture tells us in St. Luke, St. Luke chapter 14 verses 25 to to 27 and also I'm going to Matthew 16 24 to 26 but let us go send Luke first it's almost the same same similar thing the scripture says in verse 25 large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them he said if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother or disregard his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Rush on to St. Matthew. These are strong language. Strong language. If anyone comes unto me and doesn't hate father, mother, wife, children, and his very life, he cannot be my disciple. In St. Matthew 16, verse 24 to 26, we find Jesus Christ saying the same thing here but he says it in another way then jesus said to his disciples 
Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up the, their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. Verse 26. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their, their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Jesus said, anyone who will come after me, referring to whosoever, that's the whosoever of John chapter 3 verse 16, whosoever wants to come and be my disciple, a disciple is a learner, a disciple is a follower, a disciple is one who follows his master and pattern his master or teacher, and Jesus Christ said, whosoever, so where salvation is concerned, Jesus opens it to the whole world to enter therein. He says that whosoever comes, so whether you be a male, a female, a boy, a girl, a drug addict, a prostitute, a homosexual, whosoever you are, salvation is open to you. Salvation and the love of God is open to you. Whosoever wants to be, whosoever desire to be my disciple, to follow after me, you have the opportunity. You have the opportunity. God is willing to welcome anyone. But let us look at who is saying it. Why did Jesus say this? You're talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is Savior. He is Lord. He's our creator. He's our redeemer. He's the one who died on the cross to save us from sin. He's our helper. He's the one who wants to comfort us. He's the one who is our judge. The Bible declares him king of kings and lord of lords. The Bible says that Jesus Christ will be our judge someday. And this is a person who says, whosoever will come after me. So Jesus Christ is not an average run of the mill person. No, Jesus is not like your friend. Jesus is not like your buddy. Jesus Christ is Lord, he is God, even though he's a friend of sinners. We are talking about Jesus Christ. And this hard saying, this difficult saying of Jesus Christ will cause many to perk up their ears. Will cause many to say, listen, I need to do something or reject. With Jesus unwilling, and will never compromise the truth and the will of Almighty God. And opens the door to welcome all sinners unto him. What does he offer? Why is the church here still carrying on the mission of Jesus Christ? What does he offer? Because if Jesus Christ is saying there is no other choice but me. If Jesus Christ is saying, listen, I am the only one that you should follow. As a matter of fact, in saying that all should hate or disregard or renounce, he's saying, you cannot compare anyone or anything with me because here is who I am and here is what I offer. Here is what I offer. So what does Jesus Christ offer to this world? What does Jesus Christ offer to the person who would come and follow after him? He offers first of all himself on a cross. He died on the cross for sinful man. He died on the cross for all sinners. 
He died so that all could have eternal life. He died to give hope to the hopeless. He is there to comfort those who mourn. He is our comforter. He is the one who gives us forgiveness. He is the one who shows how God loves us. How God cares for us. He is the one who will extend compassion to us when he sees how much we are weak. How much we have been harassed. How much we have been used. He is the one who would come with open arms and embrace us so that we can know the love of Almighty God. Jesus Christ, he offers victory over the enemies of this world. He offers all of that victory over Satan, victory over sin, victory over the world, victory over ourselves. Over ourselves. We are going to talk about that because Jesus Christ said a man must deny himself. But what does he offer? He offers the best for you and me. He offers the best to you and me. He offers all that we cannot have or we cannot get here on earth. Jesus Christ said, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? All that he offers is eternal. All that he offers, my brothers and sisters, that he says that whosoever comes after me, he says, these are the things you will get. I am the living hope. I am the one who is able to help you. I am the one who is able to lift you out of sin. I am the one who is able to give you eternal joy. I am the one. And there is nothing and no one else on this earth that can give you that that can give you that therefore he has all authority to demand of us to demand of us to make a choice to make a choice because he offers this he says whosoever will come you see there's one of two choices that we have to make in this life. Is either we say yes to Jesus or we say no. If you say no, you can go your way. You can travel your path. You can destroy your life. But if you say yes, you must abide. You must come under the control. You must con come under the will of Almighty God for your life. For your life. So what does he offer? He says we must deny ourselves. We must deny ourselves. You must. By the way, this is one of three of the conditions, and it's just the first one I'm dealing with today. He says we must deny ourselves. What is self? Hmm? You know, for the daily dictionary, for the dictionary, regular dictionary, uh, uh, a person's essential being that distinguishes them from others. Simple. That's self. But according to the Bible standard of self, it talks about self is the fleshly carnal nature of man that continue to lead to evil. And the Bible seek to, to, to define self as that which opposes God, that which competes with God. And that's why Jesus Christ has to call us to books. He has to call us to responsibility. He has to make us accountable in coming to him. He said, anyone who desires to come after me must first deny himself, deny herself. 
You see, self. Self. Just look at, look at self before I run on. That carnal nature of man. Self always seek to elevate itself. That self always seek to elevate. Remember Satan in Isaiah. Isaiah 12, 12 through 14. This is self. Self is filled with pride. And self, my brothers and sisters, that's why self cannot come and please Almighty God. The Spirit must take over. The Spirit must direct. The Spirit must be in control. And Jesus Christ said, self must. You must recognize what self is. So that when you come to deny that self, you understand what you are putting away. What you are putting away. Satan. Satan says, according to Isaiah. According to Isaiah, it says that Satan, who was Lucifer, by the way, he thought to himself, you know what? Let me go to heaven and let me become the person who I want to be. Let me, let me be. So Isaiah 12. That's Isaiah 12, sorry, Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14, verse 12 to 14. How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth. You once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit and throne on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Five times. That's self. Self. Self is filled with pride. Self doesn't consider God. Self looks at itself and says, I am the best thereof. And Satan in his beauty, Satan in his power and his pride, Satan tried to dethrone God. He elevates himself. And Jesus is saying, self, self always wants self-worship. Self becomes an idol. Self becomes an idol. And so many of us, we idolize ourselves, don't we? Through our selfie, through this, through that, our position in life, our possession in life. I am better and we compete with the next person. I am better than he is, than she is. And that's what Satan, that fills Satan's heart. And when Jesus said we must deny self, 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 self becomes the enemy of God and is your greatest enemy to achieve your position in Christ Jesus. Is your greatest enemy? Is your greatest enemy? Self, my brothers and sisters, always seek after the things of the flesh after the things of the flesh and there are scriptures that addresses self Galatians chapter 5 16 through 21 always seeking after the flesh always seeking after the things that are temporary always think seeking at its own its own its own so flesh Scripture says, so I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the deeds of the flesh. For the flesh desire what is contrary to the Spirit. Understand that? That's why Jesus said you have to kill flesh. 
are we coming and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh they are in conflict with each other so that you you are not you you sorry that you are not to do whatever you want but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law you're not under the law verse 19 says the acts of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality impurity debauchery idolatry witchcraft hatred discord jealousy fits of rage selfish ambition dissension faction he says these people and envy drunkenness orgies and the like i warn you as i did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of god that's what flesh desires that's what flesh goes after the party life the party spirit flesh always wants what is now yourself want that and the bible says it opposes god it opposes god it cannot it cannot come and mingle with almighty god flesh and spirit are in conflict constantly in conflict and jesus christ said self all these acts immorality witchcraft drunkenness all of these that the flesh gravitate towards that self gravitate towards jesus christ said listen you must deny them if you're going to follow me if you're going to follow me jesus christ requires of from us full hundred total allegiance total loyalty and jesus will not compromise jesus will not compromise it is said it is it is not god's will in that any should, that any should perish but all should come to repentance but you know why all will not come to repentance because they will reject jesus christ for the things of the flesh the deeds of the flesh this life they will reject jesus christ for this life today why is church not failed because many don't feel like coming and fellowship many don't feel like hey i should come and worship god in mass many feel like hey i don't need jesus christ i don't but we must understand that because the flesh the fleshly deeds of this life and self my brothers and sisters is not of god and it's of this world if we subject ourselves to the deeds of the flesh we come under the control of satan what the bible says in second corinthians chapter 4 verses 3 and 4 the bible tells us that the, the gospel is veiled from people from the eyes of people why paul says that even if our gospel is veiled it is veiled to those who are perishing why are they perishing because they are going and they are running after the things of the flesh the things of this life the things that cannot give them eternal life and eternal joy and eternal peace and eternal life with almighty god that's what the flesh gives and the flesh cannot be compared to what jesus christ has in store for you and jesus christ said if you will follow me and i pray that you will that you have to come completely and totally to jesus christ verse 4 says 
the God of this age. The one who controls the systems of this world. God has not divested his power to Satan. No, so God is still God of this world. But the one who run, run rampantly on this earth continue to deceive and allow men to think that this is where life is is the God of this age he has blinded the minds of unbelievers huh? so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God Christ Jesus said if you want to see my glory if we want to, to, to radiate and shine and see my glory, you must come with your all to me. You must give your all to me. And I want to say some of us Christians, we haven't given God our all. The flesh is still in control. Still in control. And because the flesh is still in control, we will never rise to the position of spiritual maturity in Christ. We will always struggle. Because just like a drunken man, he staggers back and forth, side to side. And that's how some of us are, are living our lives. We are drunk by the spirit of this world. And we are drunken by the deeds of the flesh. And Jesus Christ is not being impressed. He's not impressed. And that's why he could have said in, in, in Luke 14. Huh? Luke 14, 25 to 20, 27. He said, listen, you must hate. No, Jesus not talking about the hatred that brings violence. No. He said, you must disregard father, mother, huh? children, brother, your wife, if you have any, your husband, if you have any, for my sake, for my sake. What is Jesus saying? That when we compare our relatives when we compare even ourselves because he said we must hate our very life when we compare that to him he says i must take priority i must be number one even over you so what he says he says we must renounce self Say no to me, myself, and I. No. This same word deny means to say no, to disown, to disregard, to renounce or forsake. All of that is saying that when it comes to choosing me as opposed to them, I will not settle for 90%. I will not settle for 50%. I will settle for all. All of you. All of you. And he says you must disown yourself so that you can become my disciples. Because you know what? When you disown yourself. When you disown yourself. Then you come in submission under the control of Jesus Christ. When you remove self from the throne of your life, when you remove self and the demands of self and put your hands in Jesus Christ, Jesus said, I am in control now. I would to God that as Christians, we would understand that fact that God is the one, Christ is the one who is in control. The Bible says that when you come, when you come in repentance, when you repent of all your deeds, when you have given up the flesh, when you have subjected self, 
Jesus Christ says, then I will fill you with my Holy Spirit. Huh? As a matter of fact, that's exactly what God, that Jesus Christ was saying. Jesus Christ said, change the mindset. That's what repentance means. Changing your mindset, your mentality regarding me, regarding the flesh. Change it so that it can focus on me and me only. That's what he says. But he says also that you must be in sorrow. Be sorrowful of the lifestyle that you used to live out there, that the flesh used to command from you. And then he says, change direction. This is repentance. Change direction. The present direction that you are going, Jesus Christ is saying, change that direction towards heaven. Change that direction towards me. Change that direction so you can have life. If you want to follow me, if you want to come after and have that life, you must, you must deny yourself. You must regard self-interest. Yes, you must regard all that you seek to accumulate. Remember the rich young ruler? The rich young ruler, he came to Jesus Christ and he said, Good master, how can I get eternal life? And Jesus Christ said, do the commandments. He said, all that I have done, what more I lack? And Jesus said, sell what you have and give to the poor and come follow me. What the, what the young rulers did. It says that he went away sad. He went away sad because he did not want to. Because he was very rich. He was very rich. And Jesus Christ said, how difficult it is for the rich to enter into the kingdom of God. For that man, self was number one. I can't give up what I have. Self and the flesh had full possession of him. And he refused to give it all up to follow Jesus Christ. To follow Jesus Christ. What Paul says regarding this flesh. In Galatians 2.20. Regarding this flesh and self. That Christ said we must deny. We must give up. I have been crucified. I have been put to death with Christ. And I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body or in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul says, this life that I have is buried with Christ. A related scripture is Romans chapter 6 from verse 4 and following. But Paul says, I'm coming to that. But Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. The same way Christ was crucified and died. I am dead to this world. And Christians, it's time you and I wake up to that fact. That if we are dead to this world, then we cannot live according to this world. You ever see a dead man uh, get up out of your cart yet? And party, go party Saturday night and go back in at the grave. You ever see any? Any of your dead, dead relatives ever come back yet? And you see them down the road at party? Or my dead relative, I've never seen one yet. That's what Paul is saying. I am dead. I am dead to the things of this world. I am dead to the desires of this world. I have crucified everything and put them to death so that I can live for Christ. I can live for Christ. The question is, who are you living for? Huh? Are you dead to this world? 
or the things of this world occupying your thoughts, your heart, and has consumed even your very attitude towards God and his church. The Bible tells us that we are not our own. We are bought with a price. Therefore, we must glorify God in our body, in, in our spirit, which belongs to God. We are not our own. You don't belong to yourself anymore. The fact that you have experienced a new life, the Bible calls us a new creation. When we are dead in Christ, then we experience resurrection. Eh? Don't we? We experience resurrection. So according to um, Romans chapter 6, reading from verse 4, it says, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. You hear that? Paul says, I am crucified. Paul is saying in this Romans here that listen, through water of baptism, when you were buried, Christians, it symbolizes your burial to this world. To the things of this world. And he said we are buried with Christ and we have been resurrected with Christ in a new life. New thoughts. New thinking, new way of living is not the self anymore that, uh, that, that controls my life. But it is Christ who lives in me. Hallelujah. It is Christ who lives in me. He lives in me. Verse 5. He says as we continue down. For if we have been united with him, that is Christ in a death like his we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his I'm a new creation I'm a brand new man all things are passed away I'm born again more than a conqueror that's who I am because I am in Christ Jesus I have killed the flesh and now I'm resurrected. Verse 6. Go right down to verse 8. For we know that our old self, that's the flesh, that's me, myself and I, was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin. We should be no longer slaves to the flesh. We should not because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. You understand that? You understand the concept? Anyone who gone into the cemetery then can't come back and sin. No life, no in the body. They cannot return. And what God is saying, you have been placed, the, you have placed the old man in the casket. You have put him in the ground to water baptism and he's dead, dead, dead. And it's now a new you. A new you. Jesus Christ said, if you're going to follow me, it has to be the new you. It can't be the whole self. It has to be the new you. Verse 8 tells us, it says in verse 8, Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We will also live with him. It's a new you. It's a new you. You and I must understand and know that we are not our own. And if we follow Jesus Christ, if we follow Jesus Christ, then we must deny ourselves. We must deny ourselves and say, like Paul, I am crucified. And, and allow the dead old man to stay where it is. I don't like to see dead bodies. Especially dead bodies of animals. You realize sometimes it's on the road until it 
deteriorate. Huh? And the stench thereof. Yeah. The decomposition thereof. You don't like to smell it. We don't like stinking smell. None of us. I don't know which one of us. We don't. But some of us love the old self and the old life so much that we go back and we exhume the body. We go back and we dig up the grave. And we take out the old self. And we live the old self. Yet, we say we are in Christ. Jesus Christ said, renounce the old self. Hate the old self. Jesus Christ said, put away the old self. Put it away. Disregard it so that you can be my disciple. You can be my disciple. The old self live in selfishness. But when you come to know Jesus Christ and start following Jesus Christ, you become selfless and move on to Godfulness. Selflessness. And then you move on to Godfulness. It is God who filled your life. You're not selfish anymore when you come to know Jesus Christ. Selfishness doesn't dominate you anymore. No. We're in the self, the old self, the old sinful nature, my brothers and sisters. We are self conscious. We are self conscious. And it is me, myself, and I, and we want to elevate self, and we want to titivate self, and we want self to look good. But when you come to know God, you become God conscious. All of the consciousness of Almighty God. He said, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. It tells us that we must have the mind of Christ. The Bible says that we must not conform but be ye transformed by the renewing of your, your inner mind, your inner thought, your perception thereof. He said, this is where it's at. You don't become self-conscious when you are in Christ. You become Christ-conscious and God-conscious. The self-centeredness that used to take over our lives through the resurrection spirit of almighty God you are now changed and you become Christ centered Christ centered Christ centered and in this world that we talk about self actualization I put big words to it and we talk about self you must realize who you are and we talk about self-esteem and we talk about high self-esteem and low self-esteem in Christ Jesus you become God esteem self-esteem doesn't become a part of your life anymore why because you are created in God the Bible says that you are created in the, in the image of Almighty God and the form of God. The Bible says that when you take on Christ, you put on Christ. You put on Christ. So it should not be Rowan Wallace you're seeing anymore. It is the body of Rowan Wallace, but it is the spirit of Christ that energizes and empowers you. It's not self-esteem, it's God-esteem, it's Christ-esteem. And that's what we live in, and that's what we know. That's what we know. When you come to know God, when you come to deny self, and come follow Jesus Christ, then all your desires becomes God's desires. The will of God becomes your will. And so the scripture says in Psalm 37 verses 4 and 5 
Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. He will make you righteous, your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like noonday sun. What a difference. Huh? What a difference. That when Christ controls your life and you follow God and you follow him and you live in his way and in his path, your desires will become God's desires and God freely grant them to you. But as long as you are not of God, then the desires of the flesh will dominate your life. Will dominate your life. And your righteousness, he will cause to shine like the noonday sun. It will burn with radiant heat. Everyone will see it. Everyone will know that you belong to God. That you belong to Christ. Because it is no more I who live, but Christ who lives in me. I pray to God. This may sound very harsh and difficult that Jesus Christ said. That if you will come after me, you must deny every desire. You, may, you must desire, de de deny every attraction. You must deny every power. You must deny everything. And come empty. So that he can fill you with his spirit. And bless you abundantly. One last thing. The flesh caters to the temporary. Which will depart. Which will dissipate one day. Which will burn. But the spirit caters to the eternal. Which will never be taken away from you. God bless you. God bless you as you come to know Jesus Christ. As you deny yourself. Because the action must be. Make the choice. Don't say no to Christ and leave. Say yes to Christ. And be willing to give your all. Because in turn, he will give you his all. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Man, I want to invite the church to stand. It's a message that is for all of us. From time to time, we kind of get sidetracked. But it's a timely message. Amen? That our invitation is, I am thine, O Lord. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and he told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of fate, and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer. 
Near a blessed Lord to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 a blessed Lord to thy precious bleeding side. The invitation Hallelujah. is still God. open. Because once we are alive, there is hope. Amen? Amen. I'd like to go to our communion time. Our communion meditation will be led by Deacon Andrew Phillips. Morning. God is a good God. Amen. Amen. There's a story that is well known in the book of Luke. I want to read it. Sometimes as you hear the message and it is told about Jesus, the message just preached that he requires all of us. And also why he requires all of us? Because he has laid down much he has given much for us he has bought us with his own life sometimes i think we forget that we are sinners and we were saved by grace when one of the pharisees invited jesus to have dinner with him he went to the pharisee's house house and reclined at the table a woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that jesus was eating at the pharisee's house so she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with, his, with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. I want us to think about that. That this woman denied herself. Must have been an embarrassing um scenario she was uninvited jesus was among amongst the rich and influential people and she was uninvited she came right in and further she just embarrassed herself by crying and then used her tears to wash his feet. But she knew that she was sinful and she knew that the person that could forgive her sins was right there. Amen? She wasn't gonna miss that opportunity. So she denied herself the shame, the embarrassment you know, sometimes our sins somehow seem greater than us humiliating or humbling ourselves. You know that? Because of pride, we don't humble ourselves and ask God for forgiveness. And at the end, no matter what people are saying, people are saying several things that the money because it was an expensive perfume. It was an expensive thing. Some said it was a waste. Wasting your time on the church and things to do, to, to pertaining to God. Some people look on and say it's a waste. But they don't know what the Lord has done for you. Amen? Others say this woman if Jesus didn't know her lifestyle. Huh? So the whole community knew her lifestyle. But the thing is, whether the community knows our sin or not, God knows our sin. And it's for us to go to him because he forgives sins. Amen? 
So people will say things, but Jesus always has the answers. Jesus said to the man, I came to your house and you didn't even show me hospitality that's given to people. You didn't wash my feet, but she did it with her tears. Huh? So every time, every time we read this story, we need to remember that she denied herself and she went to the right place. She sought counsel from the right place. So Jesus died for us to do that for us. He forgave her her sins. If you read down to the end, from 37 to about 48, it tells the story. Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. So if we go to him, because he died for us, we're here to commemorate his death, his life and his death and his resurrection. Because it means a lot to us. It means a lot to mankind that Jesus died for our sins. Amen? And he's able, as it says in James, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. We are not, our sin is not too deep and wide and great because God is almighty. Nothing is impossible for him. Amen? Amen. So don't leave out here if you're a Christian. Don't leave without partaking in the communion. But there's a prerequisite. There's something we have to do before. We have to seek his forgiveness. We have to repent. Confess our sins. Repent. And he will forgive us for our sins. Let us pray. Father, Lord God, we thank you for these emblems that represents our redemption, Lord God. Jesus being God, he humbled himself. He laid down his life. So what more, how much more can we deny this man who died for our sins? Father, help us submit ourselves to you to kill flesh now, Lord God. Let your spirit reign in us, Lord God. Forgive us of our sins, Lord God. And I pray that, Lord God, at this very moment, we will turn back to you if we were walking away, Lord God. And for those looking on, I pray that they will submit themselves and accept your son, Jesus Christ. Bless these emblems, I pray, in Christ's name. Amen. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love to me. And the voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee. To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory, for the things He blood he has saved me with his power he has raised me to God be the glory for the things he has 
Just let me live my life and let it be pleasing, Lord, to Thee. And should I gain any praises, let it go to Calvary. With his blood, he has saved me. With his power, he has raised me to go. That evening, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, passed amongst them, and said, eat. This represents my body shall be broken for you. Let us partake together. He also took the fruit of the vine, Supped, passed it amongst them, and said, Drink, drink ye all of this. For this represents my blood, shall be shed for many for the remission of sins. Let us partake together in remembrance of his sacrifice. Lord God, I want to give you thanks for his son Jesus Christ. Lord God, our sin, Lord God, we can never go so far away that we are outside of his love and his power to save lord god if we go if we run away and hide in the depths of the sea he's there because he's always seeking to save father i pray that this week lord god that your words lord god would have sunk in our hearts and it would have permeated our very being, Lord God, in every part of us. And Lord God, we would have ruminated and meditated on your word until it becomes a part of us. And Lord God, we'll not only be hearers, but doers. Father, bless each and every one of us, I pray. In Christ's name, amen. I want to go straight into the announcements. Okay, there is a baby dedication. When mothers of Salem their children brought to Jesus, the stern disciples drove them back and bid them to depart. But Jesus saw them here, they fled and sweetly smiled and kindly said, Suffer the little children to come unto me. Indeed, indeed, suffer the little children to come unto Jesus. And we have here a little child, we have our mom and dad, and remind. Okay, we have Cardella and we have Kirk, and truly, Jesus Christ doesn't have a problem with children because that little boy right now in the eyes of God he doesn't even know what sin is <laughs> he doesn't know right from wrong you know and in dedicating this child to God there is no magic thing about that nothing magic we dedicate the child but how wonderful it would be because who nurtures the child? Who grows the child? Parents. If the parents come to know God and live by the principles of God, then this child will be nourished and nurtured and disciplined in God. 
And so, what God requires from you parents, mom and dad, is that you come to know him, the heavenly father, so that you can be a good father, you can be a good mother, and a family unit that prays together, that stick together, that learn God and grow in God together, is a family unit that will remain righteous in the sight of God. And so, Cardell and Kirk, I want to implore you, you're going to dedicate this child, but hey, I want the both of you too to consider dedicating yourself to God by becoming children of God that this young man can grow up in God. So that's my challenge to you. That's my challenge. The Bible said, train up a child in the way he should go, that when he's old, he will not depart from it. Hey, yes, you won't depart, big man. All right? So for now, we're going to observe the protocol. Going to let you hold him, Cardella, and then we're going to do the prayer right now. All right? So let us pray. Father and dear Lord, we give you thanks, dear God, for this time. This little boy, dear God, Father, that you brought into this world through Cardella's womb, dear God, and through Kirk. Father, here he is. And Lord, as we dedicate him to you, dear God, Lord, I pray that it will not just be traditional, dear God, but it will be as one, dear God, that Hannah did, dear Lord, in dedicating Samuel, and she gave him back to you. Lord, I pray your blessing upon this little one. Right now, dear God, the male species, dear God, in this world, dear Lord, Lord, they are bent on doing evil. The jails are filled with males, dear God. Lord, the males are on the corner. They are drinking, they are smoking, they are gambling. Lord, with, with a path to destruction, dear God, of their lives. But, oh, Father, I pray, Lord, that this little one, that Father truly, Kirk and Cardella, dear Father, will grow him. Grow to know you, to serve you, that, Father, he can fulfill, dear God, his purpose in this life that you have appointed him, dear Lord. Father, I pray, dear God, that you will increase his immune system, dear God, that a childhood diseases, is, diseases, dear God, and viruses, dear Lord, that may come upon him, dear Father, his body will be able, dear God, to fight against them all and remain strong, dear God. Father, I pray your protection upon him. You said in your words that you send forth your angels to protect these little ones. And your angels always behold your face in heaven. So, Father, protect him and keep him. Lord, in his future, dear God, I pray, Lord, that his future will be good. One, dear God, that will see ministering unto you. And dear God, the wife that he will have, dear Father, that Lord, she will be a woman that belongs to you, a woman of faith also. Lord, I pray for Kirk, being the man, dear God, being the father, that Lord, you will strengthen him, dear God. And Lord, you will help him, help him, dear Father, that his mind and his thought, dear God, will be upon you, that he'll be able to lead his family, Cardella and his other children to you. Father, won't you bless them, dear God, and keep them. Help them to learn, help them to grow. And Father, financially, dear God, Father, I pray that they will find, dear God, the necessary things, dear God, to help, Lord, this little one to grow. Go to school, and Father, even to achieve. Father, Bless them, I pray, and bless their homes. Keep them from conflict, I pray. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. What's his name again? Leo? Okay, our little one here, his name is Tajay Leo. Tajay Leo. All right. And so God bless you. And God keep you, and I pray 
that this won't be the last we see of you guys, but we will continue to see you as you pursue the good things of God. All right? You may have a seat and all right. Bless God. Praise God. I want to continue with the week's announcements, which are as follows. Our Bible reading this week is Job, the book of Job, chapters 11 to 15. So this is just an additional reading to what you should be doing. All right, Job 11 to 15. Bible study begins this, um, continues this week. We'll be having face-to-face -face and we'll be online also. Just want to remind us to be keeping prayer those who are sick, those who have lost loved ones, we have some recent deaths and passings of friends and family, relatives. Just keep them, those persons in mind. Faith Promise is this Sunday. We were reminded about for this Sunday. Um, if you didn't take it along with you, with you today, you can take it next week. Just set aside that and um, walk with it, please. Please continue to observe the COVID protocols. We have been on a little, um, we got a little more freedom, but danger is on the horizon, okay? On Tuesday, I think, the Prime Minister will be coming with measures because the country seems to be going in another wave. It's third or fourth, I have lost count, but some persons are carrying on as if COVID is no longer. But we know that it is real. It is real. So please observe the protocols. Wear your mask, sanitize and wash your hands. And um, keep social, the physical distance. Convention 2021 will be held this year. Uh, a bit scaled down. October 16 and 17. Just the Saturday and the Sunday. Um, there will be a Bible Bowl competition, and I think a Bible Bowl team is being prepared here. And then Sunday, there will be a Sunday morning service. So all of the services will be streamed on live online. All right. But um, I don't know the numbers they can take yet. We'll hear by that time. If nothing change, changes or gets worse, the restrictions get worse. So this week, starting on Tuesday, Tuesday the 27th, no? There will be a, a day camp from July 27, 28, 29th. So the ages are 6 to 9, 10 to 12, and 13 to 15. For those, um, there is still space, Brother Wallace. The registration is finished, it's filled up. There is still space. Still have 20 spaces. What age group? Does it matter? All the age group have space. All right. So, twelve and thirteen. The twelve to thirteen. So, parents here, please register your child. All right. There are many benefits to sending them to um, day camp. Major one is you take them out here, here for a couple of hours, huh? Good, and they are. <laughs> They're fed and watered right here, and you don't have to see them for a couple of hours. That's a break for you, all right? Apart from the benefit of learning about the Bible and God, that's the major benefit. But we all will do with a little break from time to time, all right? Applications for scholarships, the Hughes Senior Scholarship, it's still open. Um, someone is here from 9 to 5 p.m. It closes this Friday at 5 p.m., all right? And it's for early childhood, primary, high school, and tertiary levels, right across the board. Okay? So don't miss out on that. Put in your application. Come and get an application, fill it out, and submit it. Okay. If there are no other announcements, there is there. Sorry. Okay, we want to welcome, we had two visitors here today, the same person. So, so we... Okay, so we have two visitors. Uh, could you just and just tell us your first name? Oh, the Fagans. 
Okay. Give them a hand. Thanks. Thanks for coming and please, please come again. All right. And for the church members, um, let us make use of the opportunity to gather like this. We don't know if the restrictions are coming back or they will be worse. We don't know. Okay, the new variant is very contagious. And, and we know, I saw something this past week, only we are ranked lowest in the Caribbean for uptake of the vaccine. The only person we're above is Haiti. And we know what is happening in Haiti. A lot of things. So um, we're 6% vaccination. So many of us in here are not vaccinated. So keep the protocol, all right? All right, let us be standing. Was it good to be here in the house of the Lord today? It was good, and the message was timely. Let us think about it. Didn't hear a lot of amen and all of that. I hope it was just that you were in quiet contemplation. All right, we're going to just close in prayer, then sing our doxology. Let us pray. Father, Lord God, we give you thanks. You're a good God. We bless your name, Lord God. Father, Lord God, I pray that throughout this week, we will just lift up your name. Let us not be ashamed, Lord God. Let us deny ourselves, Lord God. Let us big you up, Lord God, and Lord, kill flesh. Father, Lord God, let us subscribe to your word, Lord God, and your counsel. Let us, our ears be open and our hearts be receptive to your word, Lord God. Bless each and every one of us, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Have a good day and be blessed in the Lord, everyone. Thank you for those who are online also.